In 2022, municipal elections happened in the Czech Republic. These decided who will lead the numerous village, town and city governments for the next four years. Back then, I was already of voting age and so I participated in my city's election. When I was sifting through the ballots, I noticed a strange party I have never heard of, called Motoristé Sobě, translating as Motorists for Themselves. With election slogans translating to Stop the Bullying of Drivers, this party naturally piqued my interest. Join me in this deep dive into Motoristé Sobě, the answer to the question, what if the car lobby got into politics? Before the video starts, please consider subscribing. It's free and it helps out a ton. Thanks and on to the video. Motoristé Sobě is an interesting party, to say the least. The party actually wasn't founded in its current form, rather it was formed by transforming another political party called Strana Nezávislosti ČR, which itself was formed by rebranding a different party called Referendum o Evropské unii, which I will now refer to as REU. REU was founded in 2017 and roughly translates to Referendum about the European Union. As the name implies, it was a fringe political party mainly advocating for a referendum to leave the EU, probably drawing inspiration from the UK, because that definitely worked out well for them, right? Apart from that, they promised the run-of-the-mill things, like freedom of speech, upholding the rights of citizens and equality before the law. The party was founded by František Matějka, a businessman, former politician and now the chairman of the National Shooting Center. The National Shooting Center is a massive shooting range, training facility and a pro-gun interest group. Coincidentally, in 2017, when the REU party was founded, the National Shooting Center donated 650,000 Czech crowns, or roughly 38,000 euros adjusted for inflation. The first scandal for the party came shortly after its creation, when it received an illegally high gift of 10 million crowns or almost 585,000 euros adjusted for inflation from a probably very anti-EU businessman. The party had to return 70% of the gift because campaign finance laws in the Czech Republic state that one person can only donate up to 3 million crowns and the rest has to be returned. With their newfound funding, they charged into the 2017 elections and got 0.08% of the vote. That was probably the biggest waste of money since the invention of NFTs. In 2018, the party renamed itself to Strana Nezávislosti ČR, or the Independence Party of the Czech Republic. I'm gonna keep this one short. In the 2019 European Parliament elections, the party got an amazing 0.4% of the vote. Nice. The party continued to be the EU bad, conservatism good, right-leaning party up until 2022. Massive shout out to Hlídač Státu, a non-profit organization focusing on making the Czech state and politics more transparent. Their services really helped with making this video. In 2022, this man called Petr Macinka became chairman of the party and convinced the leadership to officially shut down the former party and make a new one under the same registration number called Motoristé Sobě. To avoid repeating Motoristé Sobě, I will call the party MS from now on. First, I'd like to take a look at their electoral program. The most recent one we have is from 2022, so let's go. As is pretty much tradition on this channel, I will translate from Czech to English, but if you want to check out the original source material, the link will be in the source file in the description. After booting up the reliable tool of any wannabe internet detective, the Wayback Machine, and going to a snapshot of their website from 2022, the first thing we see is a big sign that says, we will stop the bullying of drivers. Ah yes, of course, because drivers are being so oppressed and bullied in Prague. I mean, look at all those poor, oppressed drivers rolling through the middle of the city on their six-lane road. Oh, the humanity! Scrolling down the website, we see a paragraph describing the reasons why you should vote for them. They claim that the city hall was overrun by, quote, activists, fanatics, and leftist extremists, unquote. Ah yes, look at this leftist utopia full of non-drivers, no pavement princess child-crushing SUVs in sight. Truly some sort of socialist paradise, I mean Lenin would be proud. Then, they claim that, quote, they want to control us, implement bans, command us and re-educate us, unquote. 
Because, of course, suggesting that you shouldn't be able to drive your two-ton metal box everywhere is an infringement on your god-given right to roll your urban tank everywhere and park it anywhere, even in the centuries-old city center, for pennies. According to this research paper, called The High Cost of Free Parking, quote, we unknowingly support our cars with almost every commercial transaction we make because a small share of the money changing hands pays for parking. Residents pay for parking through higher prices for housing. Businesses pay for parking through higher rents for their premises. Shoppers pay for parking through higher prices for everything they buy. We don't pay for parking in our role as motorists, but in all other roles, as consumers, investors, workers, residents and taxpayers, we pay a high price." Unquote. Even in places where parking isn't free, the rates are laughably low. In Prague, if a resident wants to buy a street parking permit, it'll cost them 1200 crowns or about 48 euros per year. That is absolutely nothing considering the value of the land the parking space sits on. After that, the party claims that, quote, priority must be placed on the disregarded quality of life of senior citizens who will have it tough, especially in Prague amid rising rent and energy costs, unquote. Before you start thinking that MS finalists had something sensible, just wait until the next sentence. Quote, Pedestrian zones and cycling paths only complicate their lives, not make them simpler. Unquote. I'm sorry, what? Are you honestly trying to tell me that this place is worse for senior citizens than this place? They seem to forget that a lot of senior citizens can't drive due to medical reasons, or simply don't want to drive. Then there are some disabled people, and all children under 17 without mentors, who can't drive. Let's just make the city harder to navigate for them, right? I can only handle one more spoon of brain diarrhea from this car brain party, so let's read on. Quote, we want to put trustworthy, qualified and mature personalities in the government. Unlike today, where it's only youngsters, lacking advanced and personal expertise and life experience." Unquote. The average age of a member of the city government of Prague was 46 years old in 2022. The government isn't a daycare, like MS claims. To be completely fair to them, they do have a few good points. For example, they want to make Prague public transport free for children under 18 make the metro free to everyone, and set the yearly pass price for the rest of the network to 1000 crowns or about 40 euros per year. In isolation, this sounds good, but even these points have their issues. MS's main priority, coming from the fact that the party is literally named motorists for themselves, is car drivers. By extension, they see public transport as a band-aid solution to traffic. This is the American way of building transit, build a line once traffic gets unbearable. The line fails to reach ridership goals because why would you ever ride transit when you can drive there faster, and the line becomes a money black hole. Such an exquisite example of car brain requires a star-studded cast, so let's take a look at them. The main character is Petr Macinka, the founder and leader of the party. The website mentions his education his experience in the media department of the Czech president's office, his experience in business, and for some strange reason, the fact that he's good at playing the electric guitar and bad at playing tennis. This gives me the vibe of Mark Zuckerberg trying to appear as a human. How do you do, fellow humans? Look at all these normal human activities I partake in. Aren't they cool, fellow humans? Next, there's an economist and businessman. He seems to run his own investment company and is an author of numerous books on economics. Then, there is a self-titled expert on traffic in Prague, who just so happens to run a non-profit pro-car interest group. The group, called Jedeme Autem, claims to have a mission of promoting individual automobile traffic, because we definitely need more of that in Prague. Then, there is a doctor specializing in kidney diseases. After doing some digging, I found out that he's a founder of the Česko proti Bídě group, famous in the Czech Republic for attracting all sorts of interesting people. When looking at their demands, they demand the government to support a peaceful mediation of the conflict in Ukraine, they demand a halt to any arms shipments to the country, and they demand adopting a new law forcing social media companies to uphold quote, free speech, unquote. 
in other words, a pro-Russian group. So yeah, quite the unsavory group their candidate associates with. All the other notable candidates seem legitimate enough, with one being an assistant headmaster at a primary school and a part owner of some unrelated businesses. The other is a former diplomat, who is now involved in an unmanned aircraft manufacturing business. One more interesting person is this guy, who owns and operates a for-profit car wash company. That seems like a little conflict of interest to me, to be honest. So yeah. The Motorista Sobie cinematic universe is full of interesting characters. In conclusion, Motorista Sobie is a prime example of car brains getting into politics. Just to be clear, I have nothing against the people who have to drive or even people who decide to drive. If you want to drive, great, just be prepared to shoulder the societal and environmental costs that come with driving. If you don't want to pay that, we need to grow our cycling, walking and public transportation infrastructure. I have a lot of problems with people trying to force our cities to become car-centric, polluted hellholes. The past 80 years in North America is enough proof that car centrism ruins cities, so let's not ruin more cities. I'd personally like to see this city not absolutely infested with cars even more than it is now, so I definitely won't be voting for them in the future. Thank you for watching to the end, you're a real legend. This has been Tramley and I'll see you next time, bye! The party. Uh, <sighs> the National Shooting Center donated six. <sighs> Let's just make the city more. <sighs> for example, they want to make Prague public transport free for children and. <sighs> the group, called Yedeme Autem, claims to have a mission of promoting. In <sighs> Fuck, so weak.